This is the throttle box for the jet car. Normally it's got a big cover over it, but I'm just taking it off so you can have a look inside. The uh, levers work like this. We've got the parachute lever on the bottom, which you can see is collected to, connected to this little knocker bar at the bottom here. Um, the fuel shutoff's down that left-hand side, and the right-hand one is the throttle for the engine. Um, also on the back here, you'll see you've got this little micro switch, which is electrical fuel shutoff. So as soon as that chute lever moves forward, your electrical fuel shutoff's working. Uh, and on the bottom, or at the back, with this little bottom lever down here, um, this is the gas piston here. So you can see that grabs that knocker bar on the way through as well. So that's how we actuate it off the steering wheel. Normal operation in a run is to turn your fuel shut off on, and then you pull the engine through to 100% RPM, and then shut it all off at the end, which is activated by the button on the steering wheel, which grabs the whole lot. That'll shove this chute out and return these back to zero, and also shut off this electrical fuel shut off at the bottom, and that's all done by this air solenoid. So a normal shut off looks like this. So what we've done here is you've shut off the gas, you've turned that back to 0% RPM, your electrical fuel shut off's also activated, and you've put a chute out all at once. Pretty cool system. So a normal backup mode for this, uh, should any of this gas piston stuff fail to fire or jam, is that it all comes apart off the gas piston um, bar at the bottom here. So that's free to do whatever it wants. It can jam in any position. And basically you can hit this parachute lever as your backup mode of activating everything. Um, and no matter where these throttles are stuck or anything like that, it'll grab, grab it all and pull it all through. So we can launch a parachute out and shut it off electrically and mechanically um, without any of the gas system working. So I'll just run you through all how the jet car controls work. Um, it runs on a power bus system, so the first thing you'll notice up here is you've got the three lights. with basically three different power buses. It works the same as on your car. You've got like an accessory bus, or we call that the instruments bus in the jet car. So that runs the instruments like the EGT gauges and the data logger. The next one across runs all the engine uh, valves and stuff like that. So when that yellow light's on, the engine's armed and it'll run. When it's off, all the valves default to, um, like the valves will, dump valves will open, fuel shutoff valves will close um, into like a safe condition when that's off. The third one is like a starter motor power. So 24 volts runs that system. It's completely separate to the other two. That's a 12 volt system there, 24 volts this side and that's just for the starter motor. Um, first thing we do when we power up the car is um, turn the instruments bus on. So you can see our EGT gauge is turned on. Uh, it also turns on the data logger and a couple of other things that's not really required to run the engine. Um, and the next thing you'll see is that the green light's on now, so the instrument bus is on. The next thing is that engine light's gonna come on when we turn the engine bus on. Um, First thing you'll notice there is it doesn't come on, so we haven't turned the gas system on. So it's got a safety switch in there, whereas if you forget to turn your gas bottle on to arm all this shutoff system, uh, the car won't even start. So you can try as much as you want, it's not going to go. So just turn our gas on, get a bit of gas pressure, and you'll notice on the gauge down here the gas pressure is going to come up. So we're just cranking a bit of gas pressure into there. So that's set ready to go. Um, so now our engine bus should arm. So that's on now. Um, so in this state our engine will run. So we hit the starter motor, it'll start, the fuel will flow, uh, and everything will act normally. Um, the first thing we want to do to turn that off or ways that it turns off. So if you activate um, the chute lever, it'll turn off straight away. Um, same with the backup chute lever. So as soon as you put a chute out, it's gonna cut off fuel flow to the engine uh, and turn the engine off, which is an ideal situation because if you put a parachute out with the engine on, uh, it's just gonna blow the parachute out. Uh, when we go to shut the car off, the normal way of doing it is to just hit the chute button here. So as soon as we do that, you'll see this fire forward. So that's on the pneumatic piston. Um, so that's a normal shutdown. What's happened there is our engine power bus is turned off, so our electronic fuel shutoff valve is shut. Uh, the afterburner dump has opened. The manual fuel shutoff is turned off as well. Uh, the throttle's returned to zero and the parachute's been put out all off the push of this button here. Um, 
if there's an issue with the button or any of this kind of system, um, the first thing you should do is go straight for the backup fuel shutter. Just reset that. Give an example. So the back off will, the backup will do the same on this side. So as soon as you hit it, it'll still shut the engine off, shut the afterburner off, it'll dump the afterburner fuel manifold and we'll put a shoot out. So that's still a safe option. Um, the other thing you should note when we do that is you actually do it with your left hand here, which I haven't moved uh, for a good reason. This is called the dead man switch. So you see this handle actually comes in half. Uh, there's a micro switch just in under here. Um, and when I do that, it is kind of the same as hitting the shoot button. It's actually got another solenoid valve up in the electronics bay up the front there. So as soon as you open this, it dumps all of that air bottle straight into this piston. Because <clears throat> if you have a problem with this, you're obviously in a bad situation. You want to put any parachute out you can. Um, and so as soon as you release the dead man switch to go for this lever, now it's doing both sides. Um, so we'll see that in action where you release that and hit that. So now I've got two parachutes out, um, both the shut off or the mark switches in those fuel levers, uh, sorry, mark switches and the shoot levers have shut off. Um, shut off the electronic power bus, we've also shut off our manual fuel valve and the throttle back to zero. Um, so that's all with one movement. So the last bit I want to talk about is called the run timer. Um, basically, this came out of something that the top fuel drivers have. Um, it came out of a guy called Scott Collada who died. He basically went off the end of the track at 400 and something odd kilometers an hour. Uh, he was unconscious, he got knocked out, the engine exploded. Um, but because he was unconscious, he wasn't able to put the parachutes out as he went across the finish line and that caused a crash which he ended up losing his life in. Um, top fuel dragsters and a few others now have these sensors on them so when they pass the finish line uh, it'll shut the car off and put a shoot out for them. And we have a similar thing on the car which is just a little timer up the front there. Um, but it's hooked to our brake pedal and afterburner. We put my foot on the brake. Uh, and as soon as I put it in the conditions for run, which is basically the afterburner on and the brake off, so we'll do a bit of that. So I've launched the car, we're fanging down the track now, and that timer will go off in about six seconds. Um, there it goes there. So you see that's, without me having to do anything, it's put a shoot out um, and it's shut off the manual fuel valve and the throttle here. Um, and it's also electronically done the yellow light, which controls uh, which is run off that micro switch off the chute lever. Um, so if I was unconscious in that situation, I've just crossed the finish line at the drag strip and the car's shut down automatically and put a shoot out for me to hopefully minimise any major crash that might happen.